Abba, my Father, I just want to praise you and I just want to thank you, Father, for this Shabbat. I thank you for your word. I thank you that your word brings life and life in abundance, Father. What a privilege we have in order to be able to be those that can have Bibles that we can read. In the days before, the disciples would sit and they would have to sit and they were reading from parched scrolls and they couldn't take that word with them. The word had to be penetrated into their hearts where they would have to keep hearing the word and hearing the word and hearing the word until eventually the word was to be able to take root in their hearts so that they would know the truth of the word and have to walk it out. But Father, we are so privileged to be able to have these Bibles that are before us and that we can actually come and take these Bibles and pick it up any time we want and read what you say. Wow, what a privilege. There are countries like in China where a Bible, if you just found with a Bible, you will be arrested and put in jail. Therefore, they've got to memorize the Bible because they're not allowed to have the written word. But Father, how many of us will have how many Bibles and yet at the end of the day, we don't even pick up our Bibles and have a desire to want to read it. Because what is the desire of man? Oh Father, please will you forgive us. Forgive us when we desire so much more the things of the flesh and to be able to have these wonderful encounters with you in a, in a heavenly realm as opposed to really wanting to be able to embrace your word and let your word become part of our very core of our very being. Father, I pray that your word will not just be a word that is going to be spoken, but a word that is going to be able to penetrate hearts so that hearts may be changed. Because I have come to understand, like you said to me, it's not all these encounters that we have, but it's only the word that changes people's lives. It's the word of truth that comes to change people's lives. And we need to know the truth and we need to walk in the truth and the truth needs to come and set us free. And so, Abba, my Father, I just want to thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you that you will open up the mind of our understanding to understand these fruits that we are busy studying at the moment to understand the fruit of the Spirit because at the end of the day, those that are going to stand in the end, you said, let the wheat and the tares grow together until the end of the age. Because at the end of the age, you will judge the hearts of man. And you will be able to see who is going to still be standing and who will have already fallen by the wayside. Because many will have a form of godliness, but they will deny the power thereof and they will fall away. And if we have not learned to become doers of your word, where you are, we have allowed your word to be able to come and penetrate us to change the very core of our beings then we will fall by the wayside. We will be no different to the wheat, to the tears that are going to be plucked out and thrown into the fire. So Abba, I pray that you do a deep work in our hearts as we continue this era of the Spirit the error of the spirit is not just to be able to um, be ruled by the spirit in terms of just wanting to be in heavenly realms, but the error of the spirit is what it means to truly be led by the spirit in spirit and truth. And it's the truth of this word that the Ruach needs to be able to come and teach us and lead us and guide us in order for us to be able to have our lives changed to become and conform more to your likeness of a Yahuwah. 
And so I thank you for this word, Father. I thank you that you alone will be able to come and may my mouth be a pen of a ready writer that just comes and speaks your word with your authority and with your power that can bring change in people's lives because it's only your word that can change our lives. And so I thank you, Father. Open up the mind of our understanding. Open up our hearts that we may see the deeper revelation of the things that you want to show us in this day. We praise and we thank you for this in Yahushua's name. Hallelujah. Praise Abba. And so we have been busy with our era of the Spirit and it's been a few weeks since we last picked up from where we were. And we have covered, um, we are looking at Galatians chapter 5 the famous Galatians chapter 5 of the fruit of the Spirit, and we are looking at Galatians chapter 5 verses 22, and we have covered love, which we have gone into intently, really understanding 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and really understanding the love according to Abba Yahuwah's identity of love and not our own. We have looked at joy and the understanding of joy, and the joy of Yahuwah being our strength that we need in the hours that is ahead of us. And then we had a look at peace. And what a revelation the Father gave us through peace, where I always understood peacemakers being those that are going to bring peace amongst two people. But that's not only what a peacemaker is. A peacemaker is a person that is absolutely walking with the peace, the Prince of Peace that is the one leading the person's life and wherever they go, they bring peace in wherever they are because peace, I always say, is a person and his name is Yahushua because he is the Prince of Peace. And so as we covered peace, it was so powerful where the Father really took us deeper to understand um, the peace that the whole world is wanting the, 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 the children of Yahuwah to raise up and restore all things back to him. And these are the children of peace, the ones that need to be able to raise up in those last days. And today we are looking at patience. And so we are looking at patience, and the other word for this patience is long-suffering. So this word long suffering is the word G3115, which is also patience. And I'm not even going to try and say this word because it is this Greek language is definitely even more difficult than the Hebrew. Makrothomia. Makrothomia. And it means patience, endurance, constancy steadfastness, perseverance, forbearance, long-suffering, slow in avenging wrongs. Wow! Slow in avenging wrongs. Patiently enduring. So, when we really had a look um, at love as well, it, um, you know, Love covers a multitude of sins and it also, it forbears and it will endure. So at the end of the day, it, it, it all comes together. Love also overlooks the imperfections and failures. So it is long, it is slow in avenging wrong. So even though it has been wronged, it's going to be slow in avenging wrongs. It's not going to want to get revenge. It accepts people without judgment. So it, it, it is slow in avenging the wrongs that people have done it because it is patience, it is endurance. And the very first place that we really come and we have a look at where we see patience and long-suffering, where we come to the origin of where the Father we are looking at it now as being the fruit of the Spirit, but if we really go and look and see, 
where does it start? It starts when we're going to go look at Exodus chapter 34 when the father was speaking to Moshe and he is giving an attribute of himself. So remember, this is the fruit of the Ruach HaKodesh. The Ruach HaKodesh is the Ruach of Yahuwah himself. So at the end of the day, whose Ruach do we have dwelling within us when we receive the, the fruit of the Spirit? It is the Ruach himself. So the more of the Ruach we have living within us, it's the Father himself coming to dwell within our Ruach, within our spirit man, which then is starting to change us into the image of who he is. And so when we look at Exodus chapter 33, and in Exodus chapter 33, he turns around, I mean, sorry, Exodus chapter 34, and we look at verse 5, and it says, And Yahuwah came down in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of Yahuwah. So he proclaimed his, la his name to Moshe and then listened to what he said. And Yahuwah passed before him and proclaimed. So as Yahuwah passed before him, remember, he hid him in the cleft of the rock. And as he hid him in the cleft of the rock, and as he was passing by, this is what he said, and passed before him and proclaimed, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, an owl, compassionate, and showing favor, patient, and great in loving commitment and truth. So he's patient. Watching over loving commitment for thousands, forgiving crookedness and transgressions and sin, but by no means leaving unpunished, visiting the crookedness of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. So he will bless us up to a thousand generation, but he will visit our transgressions to the third and the fourth generation. And yeah, he says he is a, an owl that is compassionate, showing favor, and he's patient, he's long-suffering. This is one of the attributes of Abba Yahuwah himself. He's patiently enduring. He is he's slow in avenging wrongs. So he's slow in avenging our wrongs. Are we slow in avenging the wrongs of people, though? Because when people do us wrong, the very first thing that we want to do is avenge, avenge. But he's slow in avenging our wrongs because he's long-suffering. He's long-suffering. And so we need to understand that as he is long-suffering, so we are called ourselves to be long-suffering. Let's have a look at... Um, Colossians Colossians chapter 3 from verses 12 to 13 and it says Therefore as chosen ones of Alua, set apart and beloved put on compassion, kindness, humbleness of mind meekness, patience bearing with one another, forgiving each other if anyone has a complaint against another, indeed, as Messiah forgave you, so also should you. Now, the Father these days is really, really speaking about us having to forgive one another. And that is why it says that he is slow in avenging wrongs. We need to be slow in avenging wrongs. And when we look at this patience, we need to be patient with one another. We've got to understand that not everybody is where you are. Not everybody has arrived to the place where you are. And not everybody understands things the way you do. And this is what many times causes us to want to go into a place of judgment where we want to judge one another because that person 
it does not have the same revelation or the same understanding as you and therefore you automatically find yourself in wanting to judge. But we have to understand that the Father has got each one of us in his process. And some people have come into revelation of the knowledge of the truth and some people have not. The ones that I really worry about are the ones that have come into the revelation of the knowledge of the truth and then they, they don't want to receive it and want to go back into the way it was before. But for the one that has not received the revelation of the knowledge of the truth, we have to be patient with each other. We have to understand that there's going to be those that are going to come into the fold that are not going to have the understanding as what you do, that are not going to be able to speak the Father's name the way that you do, that is maybe still going to be able to speak Lord, God, Hera, whatever it is that they are using. And we have to be patient with them to understand that they are still in a process of having to learn and they are still coming into the fold. And therefore we cannot automatically be putting them on the same page as what we are to say, well, you have to be able to do this the way I do it because this is how I do it because some people are not there yet. And this is going to take patience because in a camp we have to be patient with one another because not everybody is on the same page as the other. And that is why we've got to be able to embrace one another. We have to be able to um, <coughs> be long-suffering. Father is very long-suffering with us when he's giving us, giving us an opportunity to change. Because, you know, how many times, I, I will look, I don't know about you, but Father is extremely long-suffering with me. You know, I'm, I, I am constantly in his face and saying, Father, please, I, I don't want to do this, but yet I find myself constantly still doing it. And, and you know, and I really want to change in this character area of mine. And I find myself still falling short in this area. And then I, I keep have, having to come before him and asking for forgiveness. And he's patient with me. So why am I not patient with someone else? You see, the measure in which you measure yourself, you must measure someone else. If you want Father to be patient with you, then you have to give the same measure to someone else. Because understand, in the measure in which you judge, he's going to judge you. So if you don't judge that, if you judge that person with no patience, he's going to judge you with no patience. And so, in the way that we want him to treat us is in the way that we are to treat a brother. And this is why the Father is wanting to be able to really look at our fruit because what's going to make a difference in the camp in the days ahead is going to be the fruit. Because if our fruit is not going to be there, this is when we're going to turn against each other because we're not going to be patient with each other. Because the minute the one person trips up, that's it. You know, that's, that's the one problem that there is sometimes with leaders. You know, the, 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 the flock is not patient with a leader. It's like the leader is just not allowed to make a mistake. We've got to understand all of us are pliable in the Father's hands and all of us are on a path where we're all still growing and learning. Nobody's arrived. Nobody has arrived. That is why nobody is to be put on a pedestal at all because at the end of the day, I am sitting over here because the Father has asked me to teach, not to say that I have arrived in every area of my life. Some areas I might be better off than you and some areas you might be better off than me. That's why we need each other. We need each other's help in order for us to be able to get where we need to go. But to be able to automatically think that a leader is now a leader because they've arrived, no, that's why you see Abraham, I love the story of Abraham, to see how many mistakes Abraham made before he was finally able to sacrifice Isaac and become the father of faith. You know, Moses is the one who worries me because Moses 
he, when he struck that rock, the father was not impressed with him striking that rock, and he did not enter the promised land. But he had ample time for the father to deal with him in that place of where he was now becoming frustrated with the people. And you see, this is what happens when we start to become frustrated with the people. Um, we go into a place of wanting to be able to strike a rock. Because now we have lost patience. Moses got to the point of where he lost patience with the people. And yet, I stand and I say, oh Father, I don't even know. Moses was the most humble man. Moses was so long-suffering. I don't know how he put up with his people for as long as what he did. But then again, if I read the account, I see I'm no different to those people because I myself also go through my wilderness and go around a mountain a few times just like they did. And that is why the Father has got to have us to go and understand that we need to be patient with one another. Because patience is a sign of being humble. Because at the end of the day, if, if you're not patient, you're not being humbled under the Father's hand. Because to be patient means to be long-suffering, which means you are going to have to go through endurance. You're going to have to forbearance. You're going to have to go through forbearance. You're going to have to be slow in avenging wrongs. You're going to have to patiently endure. And that takes a lot of humility. Because it means Father is breaking down your character. Man, just stand in traffic. Are you patient? Are you patient when someone cuts you off on the road? Or does the mouth speak something different to what patience would show? What do you do when someone does you wrong? Do you show patience in that aspect? Because I know that if I look at myself, you know, when I'm irritated and I'm frustrated, I don't show patience. The minute I get into an irritation, I show no patience. Because then I'm not being long-suffering. I'm wanting to have my way in my flesh. And then I don't show the fruit of long-suffering and I don't show the fruit of patience. And that is why the Father is right now wanting to do a deep work in us. Why is he wanting to do a deep work in us? Because at the end of the day, these are the fruits that we are going to have. Because, beloveds, if they are going to get a hold of you in these last days, and your own family members or people are going to persecute you and do all these things, are you going to want to avenge yourself? Are you going to go into your flesh? Or are you going to allow the Father to have his perfect work in you and love the person and be patient with the place that you find yourself in? Let's go read Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 and we are reading from verses 7. Sorry, from verse 3. Let's actually read from verse 1. Therefore, having been declared right by belief, we have peace with Alua through our master, Yahushua Messiah, through whom also we have access by belief into this favor in which we stand, and we exult in the expectation of this scheme of Alua. And not only this, but we also exult in pressures. So you see, we're going to exult in our persecution, in being pressured, in going through the pressure. You know, I, I remember that um, when I used to listen to Joyce May, I mean, we are talking many, 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 many years ago, right in the beginning when I used to listen to Joyce May, I remember her saying something about patience. And she was saying she had such little patience and she 
always used to find herself in these like um, queues and traffic jams and all these things and she used to just lose her patience and she used to get so upset until one day the father really challenged her and said this is not going to help you anything all you're doing is getting irritated and frustrated and what is it helping you and she, I remember her saying how she would be in this traffic jam and how she would see, look at the person next to her and how they were worshipping, singing away in their car and she would just be so frustrated. Until one day the father challenged her and said, do you see that person that's singing in the car there? They're not irritated or frustrated in, in the place that they find themselves in. They're just allowing themselves to go through the flow. And then she got a revelation of the fact of, you know what, instead of me getting myself all upset of you, that's not going to help the situation because it's not going to make the queue go any faster, it's not going to make this happen. I might as well just enjoy the ride while I'm on it. And not long after that, she didn't even realize that she never really found herself in a traffic jam anymore. What had changed? That even if she did find herself in it, it didn't frustrate her anymore. It didn't mean anything to her anymore. She had overcome that area of the lack of patience in her life. So I, I, you know, I, I, I want to say today that this area of our lives is going to be a thing that we're going to constantly have to face if we have not mastered it. We are going to constantly face it until we overcome. So... So many of us right now are in a position of where we're being tested and tried quite severely in many areas in our character and in our areas in our lives. And all I ask you is go look and see what is the fruit of the Spirit that the Father is trying to maybe develop in you that is not there. Because you generally find that there is a fruit of the Spirit that the Father is trying to, to, trying to work in you that you need to overcome. Because it's not there. Because I have realized, for me these days, it's like I get myself, I become so frustrated. And in my frustration, I will go into my flesh and then I will say things that I'm not supposed to say or do things that I'm not supposed to do because of my frustration. And what happened was an irritation that allowed itself to come in. And instead of me allowing myself to not allow that frustration, but to submit to the spirit of Yahuwah in the place of the irritation and to submit to the Ruach of Yahuwah of whatever the fruit of the spirit is that he's trying to develop in me, I'm not doing it. And that's why I'm going into my flesh and that is why I'm getting myself into trouble then. And then having to humble myself before the Father and say, Oh, Father, what have I done? Forgive me. But it started with an irritation. And if we really go look at that irritation, what caused the irritation? Was it my own little pride in me? What was it that caused the irritation? Was it my lack of patience? What was it? So he says, and not only this, but we also exult in pressures, knowing that pressure works endurance. So you see, the pressure that we're going to go through is going to work endurance, is going to work patience. So whatever pressure is coming our way is going to work endurance, is going to work patience, and endurance, approvedness, and approvedness, expectation and expectation does not disappoint because the love of Alua has been poured out in our hearts by the set apart spirit which was given to us so understand because it says for when we were still weak Messiah in due time died for the wicked so for one shall hardly die for a righteous one though possibly for a good one Someone would even have courage to die 
but Allah proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Messiah died for us. Much more then, having now been declared right by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. So understand, he's come to set us free. So that we have to understand that we have to go through this pressure, philipsis, persecution, hardships, trials, things that are coming our way. People that will want to come and press the wrong buttons. Situations around us that will come and press us into a situation. People that will maybe frustrate us. Situations that will maybe frustrate us. Why? What is it for? So that the pressure works endurance. <laughs> Praise Abba Yahuwah. So these things have come. For what reason? So that it works in us endurance. And endurance, approvedness. And approvedness expectation. And the expectation does not disappoint our expectation in what Messiah has already done for us does not disappoint us because the love of Allah has been poured out in our hearts by the set apart spirit which was given to us. So that love of Yahuwah, the spirit of Yahuwah that comes with the patience which is the Ruach of Yahuwah that has been poured in our hearts by His Spirit. He's poured in our hearts the patience that needs to be able to help us to endure the trial and the test and the pressure that comes our way. That's what we've got to understand. Because if we do not do this, if we do not do this, then what are we doing? If we do not allow Him to work it in us, we will never become a full man walking in the fullness of the Ruach of Yahuwah. We will never become complete unless His Spirit come and have His way in us. Let's look at Galatians 6. Galatians 6 verses 7 and it says, and we're going to read from verses 7 to 10. Do not be led astray. Alua is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he shall also reap. Because he who sows to his own flesh shall reap corruption from the flesh. But he who sows to the Spirit shall reap everlasting life from the Spirit. And let us not lose heart in doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not grow weary. So then, as we have occasion, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of the belief. So, understand, we are to do good. And we are to allow whatever we're going to sow. So if we're going to sow, like I said to you, if we're going to sow impatience to someone, that is what we're going to reap back. If we are going to be loving and we are going to be patient and we are going to be endurance and we are going to be slow in avenging wrongs, then Father is going to be the same towards us as the people who come around us will give us the same as what we have given out. In the measure in which we are going to judge, we too will be judged. And that is why the Father wants us to be able to be in a place of where we will surrender to him and allow him to have his way in us. Let's look at Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. And we are reading from... Verses 1 to 3. I call upon you therefore, I the prisoner of the, of the Master, to walk worthily of the calling with which you were called, with all humility 
and meekness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, being eager to guard the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There we go. So you see, the long suffering and the patience comes when we have to suffer long for people that are just not... <laughs> Say, for example, you are a parent and you are suffering long with a child because you are praying for that child and you are praying for that child and that child is um, not serving the father the way that they should. And you lose your patience. And sometimes it might be a husband with a wife or a wife with a husband. We will be suffering, especially when you are one. It's not easy. It's not easy to be able to be in a marriage where one is serving the father and the other one is not serving the father because you will be in a position of long suffering. You will be in a position of where you have to endure. You will be in the position of where you are going to have to be patient. And it's not always easy. Because I know that many times we want to take matters into our own hands and then we think that we can do the, the work of the Ruach and then we can speak and we can tell them what to do or what not to do or whatever it is. And we tend to want to do that. But our job is to be a helper. Our job is not to be the one to tell them what to do. And the best thing to do is to go to the father and say, Father, you speak to your son. But that is going to be one of the biggest long-suffering tests of being patient with someone when you stand and you look at how they're behaving and what they are doing and you have to continue trusting the Father and you have to continue to trust the Father that He's the one that is going to resolve the situation and you are not to take matters into your own hands. Because if you submit something to the Father, you have to trust and believe that He's the one who's going to make it happen, not you. You cannot do the work of the Holy Spirit. Only the Father is the one that is going to work in the situation. And oh, I have heard of people's testimonies where wives only had their husbands that really submitted and surrendered to the Father on their deathbed. And where I remember the, the one woman where she gave the testimony and how her husband only on his deathbed and, you know, she really had a gripe with the father and she said, now why did you never allow this man to be able to serve um, you? And you know what was interesting, what the father actually said to her? And, I mean, today she's written a book and she's a mighty woman of the father. I think today she's in her 90s already. She was like a spiritual mother to Elsie and I that we used to go to some of her teachings. And she really had an amazing love for the father. And the father said to her, my child, if I had had him serve the father the way that you want, you would have never come into the truth that you are in today because he would have raised up and you would have never walked in these truths. He would have overpowered you, he would have overshadowed you and you would have raised up as leaders in the church and you would have never come to the truth that you teach today, which she taught Torah. She teaches Torah. I mean, at the age of 70, she learned the Hebrew language. She learned the Greek language. So there's, there's room for all of us. At the age of 70, she started to study the Hebrew language and she started to study the Greek language. <coughs> so there is room for us. And today, she's in her 90s. I mean, when she was way in her 80s, when she was in her 80s, she looked like she was still a woman in her 60s. Still walked up straight. Her mind as sharp as what she could get. And yet, she suffered and she had to endure and she begged the Father and she pleaded and she prayed and she prayed and she prayed 
and only on his deathbed did the man really truly repent and gave his life to the father. And only after the father said to her, My child, all along you did not understand my plan. All along you did not understand what I was doing. And I knew that if he was to raise up the way you wanted him to, you would never do what I wanted you to do. So I need you to understand, his ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. You know, so many things we put Father in a box and we expect him to answer things and do things in our way and in our train of thought and in our mindsets. But Father is not in that. Because his, his ways are not our ways. And so that is why he says, with all humility and meekness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, being eager to guard the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Many times we have to keep the peace and walk in peace and keep our mouths quiet to a situation that maybe the Father doesn't want us to be able to speak about. And I know that that is, a, that is for me. I have relationships with friends that this is the way it's got to be. There's certain things I can talk about and there's certain things I just have to refrain from speaking about to, to, to just keep the unity of our friendship. Because I know it's just going to upset the apple cart. Ephesians 6, let's go read from Ephesians 6 from verses 10 to 20. For the rest, my brothers, be strong in the master, in the mightiness of his strength. Put on the complete armor of Elua for you to have power to stand against the schemes of the devil. Because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against authorities, against world rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual matters of wickedness in the heavenlies. Because of this, take up the complete armor of Elua, so that you have power to withstand in the wicked day, having done all to stand. Stand then, having girded your waist with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having fitted your feet with the preparation of the good news of peace. Above all, taken up the shield of belief, with which you shall have power to quench all the burning arrows of the wicked one. Take also the helmet of deliverance, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of Elua, praying at all times with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching watching in all perseverance and supplication for the set-apart ones. So you see, in all perseverance, we need to persevere. That's long-suffering, that's patience. Also for me, that a word must be given to me in the opening of my mouth to be bold, in making known the secret of Elua's good news. So you see, understand, the Father is the one that will put the word in the mouth of the one that needs to speak to be able to open the word for the people to understand. For which I am in envoy in chains, that, it, that in it I might speak boldly as I should speak. So you see, when the Father puts the word in the person's mouth that is to speak, they are going to speak boldly. It's not to say that people are always going to appreciate what they have to say, because they're not. There are some things that one has to be able to speak, and, and that's it. And if it stands for truth, and it is the truth of the word, you speak the truth. And if the person doesn't want to listen, then you can't carry on and carry on and carry on. You dust your feet and you leave it, and you allow the Father to be the one to do what needs to be done. You are not the conviction of the Holy Spirit to anybody. You cannot convict people with the fact that you're trying to persuade them that they are to see things in the way that you see them. 
that what we are called to do is to pray. We are called to bring the word. And the word is what needs to be able to bring the conviction. If the people do not want to receive the word, then what more can you do apart from pray? Because it's only the word that sets them free. But if they have been, uh, if their mind has been clouded, or if the enemy has come and stolen the word, then all we can continue to do is pray. Because that's all that we can do. Let's look at James chapter 5. Let's first read James chapter 1. James chapter 1 from verse 2. So let's just read from verse 1. Yaakov, a servant of Eloah and of the master Yehushua, Messiah to the twelve tribes who are in the dispersion. So these twelve tribes were in the dispersion. My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. So you see, we are supposed to be in joy when we go through many trials. Why? Knowing that the proving of your belief, knowing that the proving of your faith works endurance. So once again, what have we seen? The trial and the test must be there. Why must it be there? Because it's going to work endurance in us. And let endurance have a perfect work so that you be perfect and complete, lacking naught. So how do you think we are going to obtain patience without being tried and tested? If we are not going to be going through the trial and the test, we will not have worked endurance. We will not have worked patience. It's only when the proving of our faith is going to be there and it's going to have to stand in endurance. It's difficult to go through a process when you are standing by faith and you're trusting the Father to come through for you. And you know what? This is when we are going to be tested because the Father is seeing whether you're going to be able to be faithful to Him or are you going to turn to the way of the flesh. This is what happens, unfortunately. Many people don't withstand the trial. The trial and the test come. They either want to pray it away or otherwise they will make another way of their flesh to come out of the situation that they find themselves in. But the Father wants us to be able to endure. The Father wants us to be able to endure and go through the process so that the working of our faith will stand. Because in the last day, Yeshua says, when I come back, will I find faith on the earth? So what is it that needs to stand in these last days? Faith. But how do you, but faith must have its perfect work in you when you have had to endure the trial and the test. There is no testimony without a test. And how do you know that you had the faith to overcome if you didn't have to stand and endure the test? Then you know that you have overcome. Let's look at. Uh, James chapter 5, James chapter 5 from verses 7 to 11 and it says, So brothers, be patient until the coming of the Master. So do you see, you know we see a lot of things going on, we will hear a lot of things going on, but we are not to be moved by the things that are going on around us. These things have to come. These things are going to come. These things are part of what is going on in the world at the moment. It's going to have to come. So brothers, be patient until the coming of the Master. See, the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the, the early and the latter rain. So is the Father patiently, with long suffering, checking out our fruit until the coming of Messiah. So guess what? He's working it in you. 
both to will and to do his good pleasure through the trials, through the tests and he's going to see if you are going to endure till the end and if you will have the fruit that he needs to be able to have. Whether you're going to bow to him and him only or whether you're going to stand arrogant, upright and filled with arrogance and pride like the enemy. Because when the going gets tough, what are you going to do? Are you going to turn back to the arm of the flesh? Are you going to turn back to the way of Mitzrayim? Are you going to go back to that which you know that Egypt has to give you? The, the leeks and the garlic and the nice things in Egypt? Or are you going to be happy with him giving you the manna? What are you going to do? What are you going to do when the test presents itself before you? Are you patiently going to wait for him? Even when it might cost you your life. You too be patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the master has drawn near. Do not grumble against each other. Brothers, lest you be judged. See the judge is standing at the door. My brothers, as an example of suffering and patience, take the prophets who spoke in the name of Yahuwah. See, we call those blessed who endure. You have heard of the endurance of Job and saw the purpose of Yahuwah, that he is very sympathetic and compassionate. And that is what he expects us to be. He expects us to be able to endure suffering and go through it with all joy while we are suffering. Let's go look at Matthew chapter 24 as we will close off with Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24 he says, But he who shall have endured to the end shall be saved. So, beloveds, it's not one saved or is saved. You've got to understand, there are many people that are serving the Father right now that pride themselves and say, I am the bride even. But when the time is going to get difficult on the earth in the days ahead, only then are you really going to see. Because remember the Bible talks about a great falling away. And that is why he says, let the two grow together until the end of the age. Let the wheat and the weeds grow together until the end of the age. And at the end, you will then pluck out of them going to be those that are going to be thrown in the fire. Because only those that will have endured and overcome and bowed to him, filled with the fruit of the Ruach of Yahuwah, are the ones who are going to make it. He says, and this good news of the rain shall be proclaimed in the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end shall come. So understand, we have to go through endurance. So, but he who shall have endured to the end shall be saved. So he who has endured to the end shall be saved. So there is an endurance that the Father is wanting us to be able to go through. There is an endurance that we are going to have to suffer under. And that is why it's, it's important now, more than ever, that one starts to preach the truth about endurance, about suffering, about these things. Why? Because if you have not learned to endure under persecution, under trial, if you have not learned to endure people having to um, persecute you because of the truth that you stand by, then it's going to be easy for you to just fall back to the way it was before. It's just going to be easy for you. 
let's close off here. I just, Father just showed me to go to Hebrews chapter 12. We too then have so great a cloud of witnesses all around us. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race set before us. Looking to the prince and the perfecter of our belief, Yahushua, who for the joy was set before him, endured the stake, having despised the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of Elua. For consider him who endured such opposition from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and faint in your lives. So you see, no servant is greater than his master. If this is what was required of him, so shall it be required of us. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the appeal which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the discipline of Yahuwah, nor faint when you are reproved by him, because he disciplines those whom he loves. And he's going to have to discipline you if you are going to have to come into a place of where you need to surrender to him and to be able to allow him to walk, work patience and long-suffering in you. For, when you, for whom Yahuwah loves, he disciplines and flogs every son whom he receives. If you endure discipline, Alua is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, of which all have been sharers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Moreover, we indeed have fathers of our flesh disciplining us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much rather be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed disciplined us for a few days, as seemed best to them. But he does it for our profit, so that we might share his apartness. So you see, you're never going to come into set apartness if you're not going to come under the Father's discipline to learn endurance. And indeed, no discipline seems pleasing at the time, but grievous. But afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. So to those who have been trained by it, so strengthen the hands which hang down and the weak knees and make straight paths for your feet, lest the lame be turned aside but instead be healed. Pursue peace with all and pursue a partners without which no one shall see the master. See to it that no one falls short of the favor of Elua, that no root of bitterness springing up causes trouble by which many became defiled, lest there be anyone who whores or profane one like Esau, who for a single meal sold his birthright. For you know that afterwards, when he wished to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance though he sought it with tears. So let us run our race. As I remember that, I just want to share it again, um, I think a year or two ago, or a year and a half ago, the Father reminded me of a vision. Well, I had a vision, and the Father actually reminded me of this vision last week. And the vision was of a race and it was a relay. And there was a stadium. And many, many people sitting on the stadium, in the stadium, watching the last race of the whole day's events. And this was the last race of the relay that needed to be run. And everybody standing in their places. And the gun goes off and the relay starts. And when, you, when the person was running to give the baton, this is what was so, so relevant to me, 
when the, you can't be continuing to look at the person behind you that's running. You only look at them until they almost buy a specific spot. I know when I used to run relays, there was like a line that I used to know. When they get to that line, put your head down, stretch your hand out and start to run and know that that person is going to put that button in your hand. And when that button is in your hand, you run with everything that you have within you. And this is what was so important. It was like the baton was being given for the last lap that was going to be run. And now that baton was being put in our hand and we were the last ones running the last lap. And one thing that was very important was you couldn't look to the side, you couldn't look behind, you couldn't look around. The only thing that you could do was look ahead and run to the finish line. You can't be worried about what the person is doing next to you. You can't be worried about what the other person is doing next to you. You can't be worried about what the person is doing behind you. You have to run the race set before you holding on to the button that has been given to you and finish your race. So the Father says to us today, run the race that has been set before you. I have put a button in your hand that only you have to carry. And you Run the race that's been set before you to the finish line because this is the last run. You can't be disturbed by what is going on around you. You can't look behind you at what the person is doing behind you. You can't look to the sides of what they're doing on the sides. You have to stay in your lane and run the race that's been set before you and finish the race to the finish line. So Abba, my Father, help us, Father, to be a bride that in these last days will take up the baton, take up this last race that is there, the baton of what needs to be preached, of what needs to be done. Whatever it is, each person has a different baton for what it is. It's the purpose and the plan for their lives of what they are to do for you in this last run. And that each one of us will run our race to the finish line for the glory and the honor of the King's name, Yahushua, Messiah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Abba Father. Let us pray. Yevarechecha, Yahuwa v'yishmarecha, Yair, Yahuwa panavelecha, v'yichunecha. Visa, Yahuwa panavelecha, v'yasem lecha shalom. Yahuwa bless you and keep you. Yahuwa make his face to shine upon you, and be gracious to you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody.